fall to Hugs Rahur Imel in a member of Bula Lahalian Tori the Gach Sais, Agasul Yerta Hunalagun, a hell cultures in a tearsa. It is Shahugas Mia Bron, big the meal to meal a clue the Hagun. Shah Thomas Ictus Nasraha, Ictus are Nashter. Fringe <laughs> <laughs> In her to Havila Shacht get shower shul and mean fed three egg and meal alien torch, her start she ill in the car of sus. Ancient secrets. All at very reasonable price. Nur hagen fehe schacht eigen miele alien torn so agus ne kete miele von de schon an legel eschkind kat heel in winter gunaden den den vele. Well, schön kesch so akete kap in winter gunaden ma kei heel in winter gunaden ma tan tan har hein an um, internationalte agus glorgen dine vulkoni erop so gahar. Vi tasche de gober snareim shi shen reino sta Bain sa kabla shun le kiang na hans kani no ta bain sa kabla kiang na harf from the moor no ta ta shi da kabla golok di file chahor yakte rudi thai kri nevelti erfad ta shi dakar kershi si anver nevelis so merkulin skala ko morsan well ta estoi bin kholuga na gis mui tru mui tru sinare bin mui kain ser the festival a nuskar festival awan the thon ar nuni ha thon Edinburgh International Festival thon International Book Festival on fringe festival on folk festival comedy festival shin felti exula erfad at ta ni hena kole wan takabla ni kela ach dir kotorlian chat harter nom kena agus kotogen an kenal um kotogen chat kenal momentum da kela style bi se brand treat in glorence and agus hokshe bilna khshatner kahart ker hardam tasnu so he paid it at the bar na shul she's in royal mile and ni go ervalach ni go Brand new glory, how about Marco Gaiter and Tufas Olish? The day the niggas do shoot Jesus Roddy. Sure, I'm just spin my shot. Go. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Now, I'm going to take you on a tour. This tour is all about Lola. You would see cab care today. My name is Lola. I am your sugar. I wear red feathers in my hair. And the dress got down to there. I like merengue and the cha-cha. I think you now we are going to take a little drive. Could I see any Paul Kershys or Hale Couture in the car? Grach. Been glor a gloray. Got him the blue on the car. No, ni tadash in a gumprodlish. Then a minor shul a visa. Glor day ni tagin shidin so gan better clue va urhu. Agus Tarlin Galardi and so my own Gagalish and show is kind of kush came more the 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 rim. Isha isha more more a seal comedy. So question to for Galardi or Dina, how they can chug the tight yacht and chug la la brilliant Dina more Dina ta how more la raw and ish Dina kusul la Andrew Maxwell Jason Burns the Dina shin question to Nietzsche Nad shin reads brilliant to him via the shin. Shin and drama be a week here in the Sroydini, let posters, the Gutain, a Goskap, a Macharina, Agazia the Dina Shoni, Sir Nashkis, the Guiska Jokotina, Stach, Brown on the Shoni, Agas Grodish Anim, Hopain. But to Rivik showed them towards the Hana? Nero. Nero. Does she have less of anything good? Ta. Fair play to. Does she have a key and I should think in Ní rúm ag sóg an chinnall sé gabhálach, ach sé dán chinnall rád a bhíonn sé shúil le linn a féile, bhíonn nedid. Féidir éilú aid, féidir. Ní léinn éilú aid. Fíonn ar léim tú stach in taxi. Ní fíú iarracht ian a éilú aid. Ní léinn éilú aid. Cáfar, cát tú glacadh leis is dóilí mar agus tíre mar dúil lucht a bhfuil a cátú. Just roll with it. Hello, 
Hello there, hello there. I'm Geraldine. Where's Lola? Fantastic. Lola had to go and walk her dog, I'm sorry. She, she should have explained that to you. She thinks it's sort of, you know, some way of, of keeping her on the straight and narrow. But I would tell her, God is the only way you can be doing that. I thought Lola had an ocean for Pader here. Ah, uh, well, I could show you a much better time. Ah, uh, but now, no, not, not that I'm, a, you know, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Well, thank you. Tahir Levian, son. You sound, huh? Wow. Shouldn't Royal Mile and Shinaba? Should then Royal Mile. Shouldn't Mahiri and Mashad. Girl, me the father. All right, trust me. Slam the you. Shahayan underbelly, an art community show in a green galer shoe, at the Kundulish Dachanish, the Lark, the Dinner, the Sphere Green, a small community, Eli Verden, so Jason Byrne. I will never be able to say this is not my kid, okay? On his first day of school, right, in September, he was standing in the hallway, right? Lovely little fellow, blonde hair, just all standing there. And he's in his uniform and he's so happy. He's never had a uniform. He's just standing there in his uniform. And he has like grey trousers on. He's got deep pockets and he's loving his deep pockets, right? And just before we leave to go to his first day of school, he looks at me, right? And he just goes, Dad. And I go, yeah. He goes, would you by any chance have a spare moustache? I know you do the, the circuit and the festivals and that. What's different about Edinburgh, do you think? Well, it's the length of it. I mean, the only other festival that's four weeks, like, is Melbourne Comedy Festival. But in Melbourne, you're in Australia. So you're a little bit excited and you're going lovely and you go to the beach. Here, there's an awful lot of press here. You know what I mean? There's loads of press and people watching you and all. But the good thing about, for what I, for me, is that I, I've been here so long, there's, they're not, I have me fans, they come anyway. So the press don't really focus on me as hard as they used to. Mm. But for a lot of the new acts, a lot of the Irish new acts that are up here would be terrified of what everybody's going to say about them. There's a couple of comics coming here for the first time. They'll be fairly green, they'll be fairly nervous. What would you say to people who are trying to kind of get their name out there at this festival? Because it's so big. Don't come near this place and you can do an hour really easy. And I mean an hour as in like, every bit of it is funny. Not just the start and the end. You have to go straight through and have a solid hour and make sure the audience are crying laughing at the whole hour. So don't come here, they're totally ready or you'll be just, you'll just turn into a mess. I was gone, I'm sorry son, I beg your pardon, what? I'm really sorry, I don't have a spare moustache, I'm really sorry. I said, what do you want a spare moustache for? And he says this, right, I, I couldn't believe it, he just says this, he just looks at me and goes, well, when I go to school for the first time today, I want to walk across the schoolyard and I wanted all the kids to go, wow, who's that new kid with the moustache? So the film Conlon on Golach Dramich, the Broken Talkers, the show that Chuder Schulmer Chud in Vele. Have I no mouth? Is the show film? We'll talk about that in a second. But what does it feel like to show your work here at the biggest arts festival in the world? Well, it's an absolute privilege to be here. You know, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival is a huge platform for for the work. How have the reviews been? Reviews have been good. Uh, I mean, it's a it's a challenging show. Um, I mean, the audience are very much a part of the piece. They're considered. They're not ignored. Um, and the subject matter of the piece, it deals a lot with kind of dark subject matters, like particularly the death and death of, death of my family members. So I think if you're not willing to be challenged as an audience member, it, it may not be your cup of tea. It was absolutely fine. I mean, the work that Gary and I at Broken Talkers make, we make work that uh, is challenging, it is difficult. Tell, him, tell me about Have I No Mouth. Have I No Mouth is a performance piece that stars myself and my mother. So we're on stage together and we're joined on stage by a psychotherapist, that's Eric Keller. And the piece itself, I suppose, it's a, uh, well, it looks at two, two huge events in my own life, which is the death of my brother and the death of my father. I was living in England when my dad died and uh, I got a phone call to say he, he passed away. He, he went in for an operation on a Thursday evening and on a Friday morning, I was told he was dead. 
I've been told Thursday evening the operation was a success. So, you know, we went through a really difficult time after my dad died. Um, and looking for, looking for the truth, we, we knew that uh, his death wasn't as easy as uh, what we were told. So it was an eight year fight for the truth. Um, and really it's only in the last two years as a family that we've actually been able to grieve. I mean, I couldn't have done this show maybe five, six years ago because I wasn't, or we weren't, we weren't ready to, to do it. Is it therapeutic for the audience? Is it therapeutic for you or is this a difficult show to perform? Oh, it's a really difficult show to perform. I don't enjoy doing the show. Uh, it's, it's very difficult for myself and my mother, but it, it is therapeutic. It's, uh, I mean, the show is about healing and how, how people deal with, uh, with, with tragedy and losing somebody that they love. It is a universal subject matter. Um, it's obviously dealt, in, in, I think, in a very Irish way. It, it's a lot of humour, dark humour, as, as we do very well. Um, but it is that universal thing where we've all, we've all lost somebody or unfortunately we will all lose somebody. I think when they come and see this show, I think it's difficult for them to sit there and not see actors on stage. So when they, when they see a real uh, son and mother and they see a real psychotherapist, I think they kind of go, Wait, what the hell is this? What is this? Uh, I've just come from a show where I've just seen actors and plots and character arcs and all these things and I come to this where I don't really know what's going on. So I think, I think that experience is different for them uh, and I think that's something they actually enjoy. Finally, what, what do you think your dad would think of the show um, here at the Biggest Arts Festival? Well, he'd be very proud. My dad was very supportive of, of all the things that I did. Uh, um, he, well, he's here. He's here. He's in Edinburgh. He's with us. So he's, uh, he's very much a, a part of the show. So he's very happy to be here. The Shinerts and the Dollar Eye, because the Halian Tori Kaler and Nomiak the Kaila, it's Dr. Kinnayan of Kaka the Show and the Gurhor Dohok up. Achtagan Dain and Sohig in Royal Mile, Archgame and the Halian Tori Kaler, a lurk locked Fechene. King Kong musical, original score, original script. Yay, come see us. Come see my show. I'm a YouTube sensation, you know. This is a dark comedy about a library that hasn't had a customer in years. <laughs> Ian, you've come a long way out of your way to be here in Edinburgh. What, what brought you here? Uh, well, I've come pretty much every year looking for work. We tour um, dance, theatre um, and music projects around Australia and New Zealand, um, sometimes Hong Kong as well. And Edinburgh is a very good place to see a lot of work in a relatively compact period of time. In terms of Irish work that's being showcased here in Edinburgh, do people want something that's very obviously and uniquely Irish, or are they more interested in what? contemporary stories that are Irish but could belong to anywhere? Uh, well, I think I think the, the thing about theatre is it begins with "Let me tell you a story," and if that isn't Irish, then what is? You know, so I think the two are uh, intrinsically connected, and it's maybe one of the reasons why Irish work has a resonance. <laughs> Bang, 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 Softer Swells is a solo and it's exploring many different areas of memory. It was inspired by a poem actually originally and it's a poem about love. When you picked it up to read it, it didn't matter if you started at the beginning, middle or the end. It had this kind of circular quality that reminded me a lot of, of memories because you can enter a mem memory anywhere at any time. I was interested in this idea of memories and the structure of memories and how memories are triggered. But it coincided with a time where I was really falling in love with Ireland again. It was definitely influenced by the culture at home. So the piece itself does explore aspects of female sexuality, I would say but in a light-hearted way. It's definitely worked into the body of, of movement 
in a very thoughtful way. I think sexuality is, is something in the air, it's an energy and it's very personal. So the sexual aspect of the piece is really just a hint at sexuality in general. How important is this festival for an Irish dancer as a platform, as a launch pad? It's always very important when you are working as an artist to share your work, just generally. I mean, that's kind of the point of why I'm making work, is to really share it as, a, as an artist. Like the Edinburgh International Book Festival, it was quite big to begin with, but it's grown into something quite different. Oh yeah, I mean, over this 30 year period since we launched, it's grown beyond all comprehension. In 1983, when this literary festival launched, there were only two others in the UK. Now there are more than 400 literary festivals in the UK alone, and all over the world there are literary festivals springing up. So it's been an explosion of interest in these kinds of festivals everywhere. And Edinburgh has grown steadily over that period as well. So um, when we first started, there was, there was one tent here, which was the bookshop and one tent here, which was the theatre. There was just one theatre. Now we have, on this site, eight theatres of different sizes, with the biggest one here, which is 600-seater. We have two bookshops, we have three bars, and we have thousands of people who come here. So it's just, it's really, it's, it's enormous, the difference. We're not about celebrity, we're about ideas, and authors really appreciate that, and audiences really appreciate that too. Of course, it's lovely to see famous people, we had Salman Rushdie just now, but also people want to discover great ideas and so for me the exciting thing is the debut novelists are the emerging writers who, ha who are not yet superstars. The, the most famous example is J.K. Rowling whose first event here was in front of I think, I think it was 26 people. She was unheard of and but within six months she was a global superstar. Chapter one, The Killing Chamber. Bedford Square, Bloomsbury, London, 1898. There were two smudges in the shadows between the grandfather clock and the velvet drapes, one high and one low. Two pale thumbprints in a black night made darker still by blackout sheets behind the thick curtains and sackcloth tacked across the skylights. Oh, and you're here in Edinburgh to read from your new book, Warp, The Reluctant Assassin. Tell me a bit about that. Reluctant Assassin is the beginning of a new series, Warp, which is a witness anonymous relocation program, which is where the FBI have managed to open the mythical time hole, time wormhole into the past, uh, which was developed by Dr. Charles Smart. So it's called the Smart Hole, which I think is a nice little Irish touch of humor that nobody will get, which I like, because it's kind of subversive. So they've opened a Smart Hole into the past and they're hiding federal witnesses for big cases in Victorian London. So that's the premise. So basically you can go anywhere with anybody, which I like. Uh, having done a big long series of eight books with the same characters, I want, to, I want to now go all over the world, all over the universe, all the time zones with different characters, but to keep the central idea. You mentioned Artemis Fowl, and we have to talk a little bit about that. Over 20 million copies sold worldwide. And of course, we read the news there recently that it's going to make the transition t to the big screen. Will it be strange for you then to, to, to stand back and to see it visualized in a way that maybe you didn't see it? I think it will be strange. Uh, even when they did the graphic novel, um, which I was you know, involved with every page, every frame, it's still strange to see the pictures slightly different and better than I'd imagined. And, and that's the thing, I think when you bring something to a new medium, the only reason you'd bring it is to adapt it. Uh, you don't want to reproduce it uh, exactly. I want these guys to bring something new and maybe come up with a few new jokes and, uh, and make it better in some way. Because a book is not a film. Mm. And I think if you try to bring it too literally um, across to that medium, it doesn't work. Artemis, I suppose, was uniquely Irish. The stories were very Irish. Now that you've reached a global audience, were you kind of reluctant to, to, to set it as firmly in Ireland? Is this, is this new character a little bit more of a, a global citizen? Uh, the new book in Warp, yes. The kid, he is Irish, but he doesn't know yet because he's, a, he's an orphan abandoned in uh, Victorian London. So he's going to find out he's Irish in this book. Uh, and the other series, I do a crime series for the, the grown-ups. The guy is Irish also, but he lives in um, New Jersey. So I'm, I'm spreading my wings a little bit, but I, I think what people like about my writing, or one of the things I hope they like, is the, 
that kind of innate Irish quality. And it's not something I strive for. I don't get up in the morning and say, I need to represent Ireland. You, you, I am Irish, so I don't have to do that. You know, I just, it's just what, the way it is. And people like that. And that kind of, uh, the humor that we have, um, I think there's a certain smart alacrity that most Irish people have about them. That resonates, uh, I find, in places like London, uh, in New York, it really resonates. Uh, there, so th they have a little smirk whenever there's a sarcastic comment. Um, so it works, and they like it. So I'm not going to try and change it because that would be trying to be something that I'm not for the sake of it. So it, it would be, it would be the wrong way to write, if, if you know what I mean. The upper smudge was the face of a man known to his employers as Albert Garrick, though the public had once known him by a very different name. His stage name had been the Great Lombardi, and many years ago, he had been the most celebrated illusionist on the West End, until during one performance, he actually sawed his beautiful assistant in half. Garrick discovered on that night that he relished taking in life almost as much as he enjoyed the delighted applause from the stalls. And so, the magician made a new career of assassination. witnessing behind us here at Edinburgh Castle? Well, we've got the Royal Edinburgh Military to do is obviously the event. 90 minutes of extraordinary entertainment, I hope, both entertaining and inspiring. We're playing tonight to 8,800 people, 220,000 across the summer. How significant is the Edinburgh Festival? Well, the festivals have been running since the late 40s. They were originally started to lift the spirits of Edinburgh citizens after the privations of the war. And, you know, that was because of why the military became involved. And in 1950, we did the first military tattoo here. All the other festivals have grown over that time. This is our 64th season. Um, I think about 12 and a half million people have seen the show so far. So it's an extraordinary thing. Brings about 77 million pounds into Scotland. So it's an important part of the Scottish economy. And it seems to be, from walking around the streets, impossible to, to ignore. Yeah, it is. Well, we're on top of the hill here, aren't we? The great sort of castle. We have a lot of flags. We put up a lot of fireworks every night. And we make a lot of noise, too. So fantastic. Well, Tommy Don Brodulas, Gaharan Screed Nora, August Hashtori, Ambassadori Anava, our son Alina Herdenade. I'm sorry, we should talk to Dalian Tori Nehern, a good singer, a husband, a hitter, a shunt, a mercer. Well, I don't intend to earn a con Halin, a good skilt in the herd, a husband, to say more and down. This year has been an extraordinary year for Irish artists in Edinburgh. It's mostly about new writing for Irish artists in Edinburgh. So it's our playwrights, it's our directors, it's our performers. They're all of really high caliber, and it's that strong creativity in Ireland that when it's put on the international platform we realise how exceptional it is. It's just been fantastic for the artists and we're really immensely proud of them.